All right, good evening, everyone. Welcome here to Duckman TV again. Got a special guest with us tonight, Chris Barton. So, uh, what is Chris all about? I'll let him tell the story in a minute. But basically, Chris is doing a charity walk, a fundraising walk for uh, youth mental health, uh, and he's going all the way from Echo Point, which for people that are not uh, familiar with that, it's up in Katoomba to Manly. So number one, I think you're mad as a meat axe. So number two, <laughs> that's a massive walk and really like what you're doing. Chris, thanks for your time. Can you tell us a bit what this is all about and what you're trying to achieve? Uh, thanks very much, Matt, for having me on. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, so on Saturday, I am walking, as you said, from Echo Point in the Blue Mountains to Manly. It's about 130 kilometres. So like you said, my wife thinks I'm a little bit crazy for attempting it. Um, but I'm attempting it because it's a cause that's really important to me. Um, you know, I'm, I'm 10 years because I want to support youth mental health. So unfortunately, my, or my wife and our daughter, Chelsea, you know, for the last couple of years has really struggled um, with some mental health challenges. Um, and it's made, you know, a huge impact on her life being a young teenager. And it's given sort of my family a real understanding of how difficult it can be for, for families who are going through mental health challenges. So I really want to raise awareness for youth mental health. Um, so I tried to come up with the most difficult thing I could potentially think of for myself um, without killing me. <laughs> and that was, <laughs> fingers crossed, <laughs> and that's to walk for that distance. So I'm hoping to do it in under 24 hours. Um, so I pretty much will walk non-stop for that period. Um, and I'm supporting a charity called Batia. And Batia are a local Sydney charity and they go into high schools in particular and they work with um, teenagers on sort of preventative mental health strategies. You know, so when, when things go wrong in your life or when anxiety comes along or... Um, you know, anything that really impacts you, how do you deal with it and how do you um, have the strategies to deal for it? So every $25 I raise for them puts uh, one kid through one of their high school workshops. So I'm really trying to raise as much as I can to put as many kids through their workshops as possible. Um, yeah. So now that's a little bit of a story behind it. Yeah. So it's a little bit of a unspoken uh thing i suppose people like give a lot of lip service to oh youth mental health or they don't know what it is to have tough and all this but it's different for the kids right so we we grew up i'm not quite sure how old you are but i'm 45 so i'm in, pretty close a couple of years older than you yeah so we grew up in a different time it was a different environment we didn't get locked down non-stop every day for two yeah. years where you were stuck inside your house where you couldn't do anything else other than sit at home and just wait. So that uh, was so discerning. So I, like I can understand how a lot of kids have got a lot of problems because all of a sudden they turn the world upside down. It's very hard to trust people and things now. And it, the future looks pretty uncertain, right? There's lots of things going on that is just scary if you're not familiar with what like good, bad, or otherwise is so gone. Things have been good for a long time. Now you've got all this stuff going on, and it's changed your lives upside down overnight. Yeah, that's no, so well said. I think um, teenagers in particular have access to so much information now that it's scary for them because everything, everything bad that's happening in the world, they hear about it immediately. Compounded with the fact that, as you mentioned, with the lockdown period for for many. For many of them, particularly here in Australia and throughout the world, being locked away from your friends for two years has a huge impact. You know, and, you know, I'm very passionate. I know you are as well about sport. Um, yeah. And I know many teenagers who, um, you know, it, they really went through some tough times because that a big part of their life just got taken away. They couldn't see their peer group. And as a result of that, there's huge mental health challenges. And I don't like, you know, talking about statistics much, but unfortunately things like, youth suicide rate unfortunately last year it was the highest cause of death in australia for 15 to 24 year olds um and, and it's really really it's, it's almost like a silent pandemic people just aren't aware of the, the problem out there and that's what i'm just trying to do 
shine a light on it and be a voice for some of those kids that are afraid to talk up about it or don't have a voice um, around mental health. Yeah. So that that's what I don't like that there's too many people just go, oh, everyone just needs to toughen up a bit. But I'm pretty sure you wouldn't be saying that if it was your son or daughter or brother or sister or mum or dad going through the same situation. Um, so what have you found with the school? How like how did you realize your daughter was suffering from depression in the first place? What what were the giveaways and uh how did you try to tackle it before you got to this level? Yeah, so so my daughter now, unfortunately, um, she's in year eight, but she's unable to do mainstream schooling anymore. And we'd love to get her back to that point um, at some point down the track. But she does distance education now. And it was a period over sort of two or three years that her mental health challenges just progressively got worse. And for her, um, she also suffers from panic disorder um, and severe anxiety. So there was a point where she couldn't walk out our front door without having a panic attack. Um, and she's worked really hard at that. Um, and she can now go to the shops and she can now see family and get out and about. The school's one of those real challenges for her because they're, they're big groups of people and it's noisy and she's working every day towards it. And, you know, and I always say to people, it's not a sign of weakness um, when people have mental health strategies. They're some of the strongest people I know because they can drag themselves out of bed, they can get to work and they can function in society even though they're going through real pain. So it's not a it's not a sign of weakness, it's often a sign of real strength. And if someone's suffering from cancer or you know a physical illness, we tend to give quite a lot of sympathy in society. But if it's a mental illness, it's still sort of got that stigma. And I really want to break that stigma. This is really incorrect around yeah. mental health absolutely that's why i see it's a bad thing like if you got a broken arm you can say a broken leg you can say you had the heart problems you can see you can see all these things but mental illness and uh being unwell it can take a long time to 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 get over that so i've, I've been in situations in the past i've gone through some crappy stuff in my life you've probably been there too and no one's there to help you out you just gotta when you go you try to just like work it out as a kid you're already going through 60,000 other things, trying to find yeah. your lot in life, where you're going. People tell you you need to go and get a job and do all these things, and it's just like everything around you would feel like it's unraveling. Um, what sort of network support is there in the school system and that stuff for people to go through this? It's a really good question. For those who are um, senior school age, so sort of 16 and above, there's some excellent senior colleges if you'd like to call it that where uh, kids who are struggling in main schemes, mainstream schooling with their mental health can go into a I guess a, a different style of environment um, a little bit more relaxed a um, bit more like a TAFE style environment and they can finish their schooling there but unfortunately for someone like my daughter's age anyone under the age of 15 there's no real option so many many kids in her position just fall out of school and they don't come back. And we're very lucky that the state system in New South Wales have a distance education component. And she's been accepted into that, which means she can be part of a school system. And she does her schooling, I guess, online from home. And, and it's a good solution for her, but she still misses the peer, the peer learning and, and everything that comes associated with being a teenager and growing up with your friends in that environment. So it's a good solution. But, but it's not a great solution for her. Yeah, well, that that's the thing. It's not like a Cinderella sort of thing. Um, one shoe doesn't fit all. There's many shoes and many different fits. And you yeah. might find some people where you have to keep looking for what what's the right thing altogether. Um, and people's family support network, that must make it very hard on your family as well. Uh, it, I mean, it definitely has been... A difficult time, you know, um, from a work perspective and a financial perspective with us adjusting to it. But when it's one of your kids, you'll do any parent knows you'll do anything for them. And, you know, we will do anything for her to help her through this stage. And, and I'm confident of how hard she works at it, that she'll be able to work through most of her challenges and she'll get out in society as an adult. But it worries me 
just as much. There's so many kids out there that don't have the same support from their parents. Um, and it's kind of brushed under the table um, or it's hidden. And that's why there's such, um, you know, disturbing suicide levels. And, and that's really driving me. I mean, for me doing this walk, it won't directly help my family. But if I can help one other family and one other teenager who, who hasn't got that support, it's worth it for me to do this. And, and that's what's really driving me. So, so that's that's a big thing, right? So there would be a lot of other people they wouldn't know where to go. Like, it's hard to get young people to chat to you at all to tell you what's what's even problems. So, how did you identify there were the problems? Well, your daughter just became withdrawn and started pulling away from everything. And um, yeah, we're, we're fortunate. I would not say we're fortunate, but fortunate that it was quite obvious for her. So, unlike a lot of people who suffer from depression and they can hide it quite well. Hers was very visible. And to her credit, she is very open about mental health now. So, you know, I wouldn't surprise me in a couple of years' time if she's out as a young mental health advocate herself once she works through some more because she's not afraid to tell people the challenges she's got. And that, and maybe that's a gender thing or maybe that's sort of personality, but a lot of kids aren't as open. And I get it. When I was 15 or 16, I would have hidden, hidden it and not told anybody. Just, that's, that's just the way, um, you know, primary people of our generation were raised as well. Um, and, you know, I don't want this generation to have to do that. If, if there's a problem, they should just be open and speak about it. And, and I've learned a lot from my daughter how open she is. Um, about it and that's what's made me so open to share about it as well yeah so how did you find Batia and how did they give you advice on what to do how did, how did that come about in particular Batia um I just happened to get recommended by a friend of mine um my wife is actually a school teacher in Western Sydney as well and she had them come into her school um, run one of their programs and um, you know I've just got to know the charity through there um, and I just think it's awesome the way they structure their uh, they do a number of things but their programs in high schools they actually bring in young people who've been through challenges themselves to talk to the kids so they'll bring a 19 or 20 year old in who will talk to a bunch of 15 year olds about the depression they suffered or the anxiety they suffered and what they did to work through it. So it becomes very real for the kids, and but it's relatable. It's not someone my age or your age coming in yeah. and saying that it's someone who's is much more relatable to them. And, uh, and I've just, you know, kind of been supporting them ever since. And I've been going, you know, they're, they're helpful to me and I've seen what they've done, but what can I do to really help you know, get the word out because as a small charity, they're competing so much to get their name out there. It's really hard for them uh, yeah. to do that. I think that's one of the big barriers you just mentioned there too, uh, getting someone relatable to them because when people shut down, particularly young people, they don't feel like we relate to them at all. They feel like they're ostracised. That's why... In the media case, it's Gen X, Gen Y, Gen Z, Gen whatever this new one is. And yeah. like it's the stereotyping is bad. So it's not positive stereotyping. It's like denigrate the generation after the last until we get to the stage like, oh, look at this generation now. I don't know what they're doing with themselves. So like it basically casts them out as no hopers straight away before they even start the journey of their life, in particular, their kids need to live. Yeah as kids and have support networks. Absolutely. I think um, it's everyone can be guilty of doing that at times. So that's sort of stereotyping in different generations. Uh, but I genuinely believe this teenage generation has got more pressure on them than many for a long time. And it, it's to do with the um, technology in the world and just how open everything is now. Um, it, it's definitely a difficult time. And, you know, we should be supporting not only the younger, but the older generation. I think that's something that's important in society. Yeah, that's right. Like if we, I remember when we had problems growing up, you could, you go home at the end day from school and that'd be the end of it, right? You could turn off, you could go and do other things, but it's in your face all the time now, the media, social media. And if people want to cause you problems, 
if you're trying to be online on Facebook or whatever, chatting with your friends or whatever, or whatever they're on TikTok, Instagram, it's just nonstop. It can be in your face. If someone wanted to create problems for you, you would see it effectively 24 seven if they wanted to go to that much effort. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's much more difficult to escape um, that sort of bullying as well as it once was. Um, this is just ever present for them. And um, I mean, there's I know, I know there's always lots of arguments generationally about should teenagers have technology and should they be on this. But it is the way of the world now. The world's the world changes, and and people do, will have technology, and teenagers are going to have technology. So it's about getting them to understand how to use it safely, how to, for them to realise that when they are using it, that, um, you know, that it's not the real world uh, as well and, and kind of learn the emotional maturity around using it. And I guess there's probably many adults who struggle with the same thing with social media. Yeah. So what area do you live in in Sydney? Uh, I'm now in Blacktown. Yeah. So does your daughter go to a local school or was she going to local schools around Blacktown? Uh, she was, yeah. yeah. Correct. Has she got a supportive friend base and everything like that? Or is this really uh, caused her to be quite withdrawn and uh, pull away from people as well? Um, she, did, she did when she was at school. She was very outgoing. So she had quite a good supporter base. And we've got a good family support base. But definitely her uh, peer group, um is much smaller than it would be for a for i guess if you want to say a typical child who's in a normal school because she doesn't go and do dance or sport or gymnastics or martial arts like she used to and she doesn't get out to school so one thing it has done is is made my nuclear family much closer so she's got an amazing brother who's 16 and he's super supportive of her and they're very close um, and they're probably much closer than they might have been if she was at school and out doing other things. Yeah. So when you identified there were problems and she was suffering from depression and become withdrawn and you need to take it out of school, did you approach the school or the education department and um, try to go through the process of seeking help or going down the path what, what to do? Because you would have been lost and not sure where to, I would have been lost. I wouldn't have known what to do. Uh, it was definitely a difficult time. So probably the first year um, was a real struggle for us because uh, Chelsea made it into school tw- two days in a year, in that first year. So she was, so that that was kind of a success rate of getting her in. But I have to say the school that she went to, which was the primary school at the time, was amazing and very supportive. Um, but um, we, we eventually... Um, kind of found our way and had to fumble our way through it with their support. Um, but it was it was definitely difficult um, because it wasn't a typical path, you know, that um, there isn't a tip, it isn't a typical path that she was following. So it was a, definitely a difficult time. Yeah. So th- there would be a lot of other parents that are probably going to watch this in the next couple of days, a week or whatever, are going to relate completely to you. So what would your advice be for them? Because they're going to be in the same situation. They're going to be trying to scratch the surface and think, what did we do wrong? So what what could we do better? But they won't know where to go. What, what your, would your advice be for someone else that's been in your position? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and it's difficult because I think every family and situation is different. But the one thing I could suggest is... Um, You know, and it's amazing what you say because the amount of people already who've come, I guess, out of the woodwork and called me or messaged me and saying, Chris, this has happened in our family or this is happening to us and and we haven't known, you know, what to do and it's great for someone to put a voice to it. You know, it shows you how many people are really going through things. Um, But I would say kind of don't sweep it under the carpet as a parent. Um, and, and try and, you know, particularly with teenagers, we all know how hard it is for them to communicate back to you, but just keep um, keep confident and keep at them and keep creating that conversation because they want to chat to you about it. They might put up a wall, but they deep down they want your support they, and they need it. 
So just keep chipping away until you chip away to the point where they're ready to open up. And once you're once you're at that point, things can become easier. But but I understand how hard it is because teenagers often, being a teenager, they just put up a wall. Um, but but don't give up. Just keep chipping away and don't don't sweep it under the carpet. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, when did you come up with the idea to do the actual walk? But what? So you were obviously thinking, I want to try to raise funds for for Tia, and thinking how you could do that. So you got the idea to do a walk. How did you come up with choosing the destination and the distance and everything like that? Yeah, good question. I was it was actually Christmas time. Um, it was only came about from Christmas time, and I actioned it pretty quickly because. Um, I messaged the the contact I had at the tier, I think, in the first week of January and said, this is what I'm going to do. Um, so it's been about four months now. So it was only four months ago. And I, when I sat down at Christmas, I, I thought, this year I need to make a difference. You know, um, I don't want families to, to have the same challenges we had. What can I do that really makes a difference? And I said, I love walking. So I love sport and exercise, not walking that far normally, but I said, what can I do that's going to push me to my absolute limits? And I thought, well, why don't I just walk for 24 hours straight? And then, to be honest, I just put out a map and kind of went, I'm in the middle of Katoomba and Manly approximately. <laughs> um, they're, they're two, like, iconic parts of Sydney. Um, why don't I see if I can walk from one end of Sydney to the other? And then I looked at the kilometres and went, hang on, that's going to be a stretch. Um, but I went, no, nah, I'm going to do it. You know, the pain that I'm going to put myself through for 24 hours is nothing compared to what a lot of people have to deal with in mental health. So uh, I messaged Batir in the first week of January and said, this is what I want to do. And they've been super supportive. Um, and I've been training really hard, you know, probably doing 120 kilometres a week of walking the last four months to try and get myself in a position that I can handle it. And I'm really appreciative of talking to people like yourself now because the last few weeks I really just want to try and get the word out and spread the message about mental youth, mental health and the tear. Yeah. Well, it, it's massive what you're doing. So if you managed to get sponsors on board, would you like to give them a plug and say what they're do, how they're helping, what they're doing for you? Yeah, yeah no. Appreciate that. Yeah, Optimal Spine and Chiropractic Centre um, at Blacksland in the Blue Mountains, run by an awesome guy called Andre. Um, I've been seeing him regularly for a long time, but the last four months he's been providing treatments for me as a sponsorship just to alleviate all the pains and aches I've had in preparing for the walk. And I'm going to be up there Friday night seeing him and he's going to strap my knees up and my ankles and get me ready for Saturday morning. So he's been awesome in, in trying to, you know, he's a mechanic for the body. So I appreciate him. Right at the other side, um, the Ivan Hotel in Manly are providing the venue space. Um, so we're having an end of function event at midday um, at the Ivan Hotel in Manly, and anyone's welcome to join that. Um, it's just a celebration lunch at the end. I'm hopefully going to cross the finishing line at um, midday, fingers crossed, um, and the Ivan Hotel have been great in supporting it. And I've also, I should have been wearing it tonight, but there's a great print company in Auburn called Create Apparel, and they've done up hats and shirts for everyone involved in my walk as well. So there's a nice little uniform. Um, for everyone involved in the walk. So so those three businesses have been awesome in supporting me. Yep. So have you got anybody that's going to go along and support you along the way throughout stages or for the whole walk? It's a good question. Yeah, I have. So I didn't actually plan on it, but when I put the message out to family and friends, I've had people put up their hands saying, I'd like to walk two hours with you here, an hour with you here, you know, 45 minutes with you here. So what, what I did is I said, okay, if people like to do that, why don't people join me along the way? So I've broken my walk up into sort of 12, sorry, two-hour segments. Yeah. Um, so which is about sort of, you know, every 10 to 15K. And I've got a number of people who are going to walk with sections along the way, including my 16-year-old son who said, who said, Dad, I want to support Chelsea and mental health. So 
he's going to walk probably 18 hours with me. He's just not doing the six hours from midnight to 6 a.m., but he's going to do the rest of it. And even my 73-year-old father is going to come and do four hours of a walk with me as well. So it's become a real family affair with people just joining me for parts along the way. So that's really awesome. That, that, I've got that is support. a massive... That, that, that's a massive thing to do. You know, I've got some connections around the traps. You know, I'm going to try to see, have you got any shoe sponsors or anything like that? Like, what are you doing for shoes? I was I was lucky that um, Catman, I should have mentioned Katmandu, um, gave me a discount on shoes. So I've got some really good sort of long distance walking shoes, which yep. are really helpful. Um, but I'm super open to anyone who may want to come and do the last half an hour down in the manly as well into the lunch so i've kind of opened that up and said if anyone wants to walk the last 30 minutes with me and we kind of have a fun celebration as much as i'm going to be able to as yeah. that last half an hour come with me so uh, you know I, i'm open to anyone at the very beginning or very end to sort of join me for that part of the journey as well yeah it's um it is a big challenge you put out there. It's a big distance to walk in a long period of time. So yeah, I, I wish you all the best. It is massive. Um, I will reach out the connections like Big Sports Breakfast, Gerard Middleton. Um, this could be something you can get onto and help out with this. So I hope hope we can. I, like I said, I got a couple of connections around in places, and I'll try to see what I can do to help you out getting more awareness and hope maybe some fundraising. So if people want to donate money to the cause, how do they go about doing that? Yeah, I have a um, fundraising link, um, which I'm not sure, Doug, man, if you can share. I don't, I, it would be too hard for me to say it. Um, yeah. So uh, I'll, I'll share the link when I post the video. I'll, I'll put it up. Um, this will go on to YouTube. This will go on to Duckman TV on facebook as well so and i'll try to share it around all the networks i can connect people to it and attach people and we'll see um i think of people like rebel sports might want to get involved with stuff like this uh perhaps asics and anything like that it should could be some big opportunities for people to do do some goodwill stuff here and provide some extra equipment that's going to make your day and journey a, a bit more pleasant throughout the thing um Thank so, you. So overall, so what are you hoping that you can achieve? So other than the fundraising and raising awareness, what's going to be when you get back to reality on Monday? What are you, what are you trying to do? How, how do you think you're going to help your daughter moving forward and other people? It's a good question, Duckman. One thing that's kind of been um, playing on my mind a little bit is I mentioned earlier the amount of people who've sent me private messages about the challenges they've had with mental health. Um, and, you know, uh, it's got me thinking that this may just be the beginning for what I want to do with youth mental health. You know, it's it's given me, um, it's strange, it's kind of given me like a renewed purpose um, to do this. And I feel like... Um, the walk is is a start, but it's not the end of it. I don't know where it goes from there, but I feel like there's so much more I can do and maybe it's more walks with other people or maybe it's building out from this. But I'd really like to, you know, create a movement around supporting youth mental health. And I, I guess this is the first step for me and, um, you know, I'm just not sure where to from next, um, but I'll take some time to reflect and, you know, see if I can build from there. Yeah. I like the idea of trying to set up a support network. So the onus can't be completely on you. Uh, I think there's some professional people around. Like I said, I'll try to dip into people that I know that hopefully can help you in some way, but a support network for people where their children are suffering from youth mental health in particular is a, a very big thing. So it's so got men's line for men and beyond blue I haven't really seen anything for kids to be on, be out there for you. No, there's not a lot, and particularly from a support perspective of families as well, um, because uh, you know what I've learned a lot of things from a perspective of how um, how our family has learned to deal with it better, and and 
And so I think there's support for families. There's, there's something that can be done there as well, absolutely. Yeah, so uh, I know you got support of Bob Turner as well from Blacktown City Football Club and former coach of the Sydney Kings back in the day when, when they were a very good basketball team. <laughs> yeah, they were, um, yeah. So has Bob been able to help you with the networking opportunities? Obviously, that's how I got on board because yeah. Bob raised it with uh, the Independent Magazine and uh, I think it's an important issue that needs attention. You know, Bob's been awesome. He's he's um, a wonderful guy and he um, he's always someone who's looking to give back and help out. So he's been great, particularly um, sharing, um, you know, sort of connections and helping me out in that way. So um, I'm really appreciative of Bob for his support as well. Yeah. I'm going to see what I can do. Like I said, I'll get this out. This is going to go on YouTube tonight. So it'll go on Duckman TV tonight. I'll find you on Facebook and include you in this, tag you in it. I'll tag Bob in it as well so I can share this and network this about. Um, look, I wish you all the best of luck. I'm very not very likely to catch up with you before. And unfortunately, I'd like to try to. I definitely want to catch up with you afterwards. If it's on, I, I hope it's on Sunday. I'll try to do what I can. Otherwise, in the following days, and we'll try to see if we can kick this on a bit further for you. Yeah, no, that'd be awesome. I really appreciate the support, Dark Man. Thank you. Yeah, ab absolutely no problem at all. So if you want to help out uh, Chris here, you can go to Batia. Uh, it's got a link. I'm going to put the link up uh, later on and share the information about how you get involved in this. It's a very important cause. So uh, you for probably getting a bit forgotten about in all this now because everybody's trying to salvage everyone's jobs and everything else so they're becoming almost like the forgotten generation unfortunately and it could be to the detriment of our like long-term health and future going forward no absolutely it's it's too important a conversation not for me to shout about so i really appreciate you being part of that thank you yep so i on, know on a few people out there that are right into doing these big walks um you like to get on board, eh? Chris will happily have a bit of support, particularly at the start. It could do with a bit in the middle, I think, because I think you're going <laughs> to be feeling it coming down the mountains a little bit when it starts to get flat around Penrith. It yeah. might be going, oh, yeah, the burn is real. So, but yeah, we wish you all the best for that. Well, what sort of support uh, have you got? What are you going to eat? Have you worked out what your diet plan and what's going to look like during the journey? Because it's going to be pretty full on and pretty harsh for you. Yeah, it's, it's a good question. That's one of the tasks this week, that I'll just be eating lots continually. And the biggest challenge is I love coffee. So um, so I'm probably, I, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to miss out on my coffee. So my wife's going to um, drop me a few on the way just so I'm not too cranky on the walk. <laughs> and it'd be understandable if you are. It's a big walk. I wish you the best of luck. And yeah, I hope to catch up in the next couple of days or week or so. So and see how you went. Appreciate that. Thanks, Doc, man. No worries. All right. There you go, everybody. This will go online later on. Thank you very much, Chris, for coming on. Uh, this will go on Duckman TV. Keep on ducking, everyone. And we'll chat to you all again soon.